Are you ready for some Jersey? Well, we've got Jersey. The zipper was made here. The light bulb was made here. The color television calls the Garden State home. Everybody wants to know about New Jersey. Sandy beaches, beautiful cities. We even have the Jersey Turnpike. Inventors, music, the movies. You need an exit? We got them too. You want Jersey? This is Jersey. Welcome to this edition of This is Jersey. We're down on the beautiful campus of Monmouth University today, visiting one of the centers of distinction, the Urban Coast Institute. Created in 2005, the Urban Coast Institute provides research, education, and collaboration on science-based policies and programs, which help support healthy and resilient coastal ecosystems along the Jersey Shore and beyond. The Institute focuses mainly on the relationship and interactions between humans and the coasts and watershed environments in New Jersey, which are ideal locations for this kind of study. They seek to help New Jerseyans understand their impact while using and living near the coast and how they can manage, conserve, and restore these beloved environments. Dr. Jason Adolph is an endowed professor of marine sciences at the Institute, and he's here to tell us more about what they study here and its purpose. So the Urban Coast Institute is a center of distinction at Monmouth University, and they do many things, uh, some of which is supporting faculty and student research into water-related issues and coastal-related issues. And in that, you work with the lakes and the oceans in this area and in the tri area. Tell me about some of the programs you work on. I'm a biological oceanographer. I work with something called phytoplankton, which are the microscopic algae in the water column that do primary production. They're the plant-like cells that, that are the base of marine uh, ecosystems. One of the areas I work in with, with phytoplankton is something called harmful algal blooms. These are when uh, among the 25,000 or so phytoplankton that are out there, there's a small cast of characters that are toxic. They make toxins, they, they cause um, harmful effects to ecosystems when they grow, and that's where my research focus has been. Uh, one project is uh, in the coastal lakes of Monmouth County, we're looking at uh, water quality and harmful algal blooms in places like Deal Lake, Sunset Lake, Sylvan Lake, Lake Como is on the list. And these, these environments have been um, strongly impacted by uh, human activities for a long time. And one of the expressions of that that we've been noticing more, more recently is the formation of harmful cyanobacterial blooms. Now, when you say human, do you, you also mean geese and other livestock, or just human meaning what, garbage? When I say human, I'm thinking about using these lakes as stormwater uh, repositories. Okay. When, when water falls in the, in the watershed, runs off the streets, down the storm drains, uh, it often ends up with everything it's carrying in these right. coastal lake systems. Fertilizers, other things that we put on our lawns. That's right, right, right. And one of the exciting things about the project that we're doing now in coastal lakes is that we're, we're training citizen scientists throughout Monmouth County to actually do sampling in the lakes where they live. Um, and actually take some ownership and take some control of the, of the data collection to to help with this issue of harmful algal blooms and nutrient pollution in general. In fact, out in the hallway here, those blue coolers we saw on our way in are all the water quality sampling kits that we, my students and I have put together for the citizen scientists to take to their communities and start their sampling programs. We've, we've started in the sense of planning and, and building the kits and stuff like that. We're just waiting to get the kits into the, the, the hands of the citizen scientists so that they can be, begin their sampling programs. What about the rivers? You work with them as well? Yeah, so another aspect of what we do in my lab, and this is all work that's, that's primarily driven by undergraduate students at Monmouth University. In the Navasink, the Shrewsbury River, rivers, we're looking at um, phytoplankton biomass and um, harmful algal bloom effects there. The, the biggest issue we found there is these very high biomass um, areas in the Shrewsbury River, up Branchport Creek primarily, where there are known problems with hypoxia and fish kills. Hypoxia is when um, the, the amount of algae growing in the water is so, so much that it, um, through decomposition, depletes the oxygen in the water, and then, of course, fish end up there and die. I know you're doing water testing at surfing beaches in Monmouth County. Tell me about that and how it's working for you. Yeah, so we recently started a, an exciting project with the Surfers Environmental Alliance, um, who are actually funding the project where um, my students and I and a, another colleague at Monmouth, uh, Jeff Weisberg, will be looking at microbial pollution at surfing beaches where there are um, storm drain outfalls at the beaches. Um, and specifically, we're looking at 
the microbial pollution levels in the water, so things like um, enterococcus, things that indicate uh, sewage or animal waste runoff getting into the water. So the surfers came to us with the idea that they know anecdotally that bad stuff is coming out of these pipes after rainfalls, often when the waves are best and people want to get in the water, and they wanted someone to do a scientific study to look at that. And so that's what we're doing over the next year with them. The other aspect of that project that's exciting is that the way the state monitors swimming beaches, uh, they do it mostly during the, the, the bathing season, between May and September. But as you may or, not, may or may not know, if you're a surfer, most of the surfing occurs between September and, and May, uh -huh. the best season. So we're also you know, helping the surfing community address that issue with you know, the recognition that there's a big population of people using the beach outside of the typical season and the water quality issues don't just go away. Outside of the Monmouth County area, can you share some other areas that you've worked in the quality of water here? So in the year and a half or so that I've been at Monmouth University, I've been lucky to get involved with other projects outside of our, this, this area. One is um, when, when the Oyster Creek power plant was shut down near Forked River, um, the state of New Jersey started a study to look at the, the potential changes in the, uh, the ecosystem that would result from that. So Monmouth University had a project before I was here characterizing baseline characteristics of, of Barnegat Bay uh, zooplankton, the animal types of, of plankton in the water, uh, basically fish food, so the fish eat. Uh, and now um, I'm part of, with Professor Jim Nichols, um, part of the UCI also, a project to look at whether or not the closure of the Oyster Creek power plant, which means removal of a large warm plume of water constantly circulating around that part of Barnegat Bay, whether or not that will have an impact on the zooplankton populations compared to the previous measurements that were made in the baseline study. Interesting. We don't think about something like that until it happens, right? You know, right. How things affect other things, right? Right, right. You don't. And um, you, know, you can either go with the anecdotal changes that people see, or you can do a, a study, uh, you know, a scientific study, and, and really look at the changes closely. There's so many things in New Jersey I would love to get involved in, uh, oysters and, and clams and their effects on water quality. I worked in Chesapeake Bay for about 10 years, much more attention paid to oysters and what they do to water quality. I know that in New Jersey, basically don't find oysters except in maybe two natural environments. I think the Mullica River and Delaware Bay are the two naturally recruiting oyster populations in the U.S., or I'm sorry, in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of effort going into oyster aquaculture and just reestablishment of, na of natural shellfish populations, not, not necessarily for sale, but for the good of the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So oysters and other shellfish, like clams, they, they, they're filter feeders. They filter particles out of the water. They improve water clarity. Um, so they have definite be positive benefits for the ecosystem. And if you look at the, from my side of what I do with the phytoplankton, uh, one of the biggest problems of New Jersey's water quality is too much phytoplankton in the water. Mm -hmm. So too much phytoplankton in the water, not enough shellfish, they're, they're related problems because right. the shellfish would be removing phytoplankton from the water. So I'm definitely you know, all in and behind with shellfish restoration efforts. I'd love to see it happen. I just haven't gotten directly involved in it yet. So I understand you have a way to collect water to determine the fish that are in that general area. Tell me about this, eDNA? eDNA stands for environmental DNA. It's a technique that's been around for, for a while and is just being more and more implemented in the marine environment. We have a collaboration between Monmouth University and UCI with the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, the DEP, and Rockefeller University where we've started to collect environmental DNA samples when the New Jersey DEP is doing their fish trawl surveys, which they do every other month and have done so since the 1980s to, to take stock of uh, the, the fish uh, abundance off of the New Jersey coast. When you're looking at environmental DNA, you're looking at fragments of DNA in the marine environment that can indicate the presence of a fish species. So the idea is that in a liter of water, you can filter out and extract environmental DNA and detect things like striped bass or um, black sea bass or sturgeon or fin whales. And the, the experiment that we're doing with New Jersey DEP is to see whether or not the eDNA signal that we get um, 
corresponds with, with what they're catching in their nets. So it's really a, a, a ground truthing or sea truthing of the technique um, against the, the eDNA being the, the new technique and the, the trial survey being the old trial, tried and true technique. Mm -hmm. We've completed one round of sampling so far and the, the results look very promising. Um, and we're going to be continuing that project over the next annual cycle of their fish trawl surveys. That's great. Thank you very much. When we come back, I want to talk to you about what students are doing here at the Urban Coast Institute at Monmouth University. We'll do that when we come back. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to This is Jersey. We're here at Monmouth University in Long Branch, and we're talking to Professor of Marine Sciences, Jason Adolph, about the Urban Coast Institute. The Institute is just one of the many fine departments at Monmouth, where students get to work and study the environment they live in, and have an immediate real-world impact with their work at the school. There are a multitude of programs within the Institute, and their research into harmful algal blooms at the Fab Lab with our guest, Dr. Jason Adolph, is one way to help in the process of keeping NJ water sources safe and clean. So Jason, what are you doing to get students involved to have them learn? They're going to be the future. Tell me what you're doing with them. Right. So we're, we're primarily an undergraduate institution here, and our, our main mission is teaching, although many faculty do research. So one way the students get involved is by volunteering or actually getting paid positions as research assistants with different faculty members' labs. The Urban Coast Institute supports a lot of students through different um, fellowships and travel grants and supporting faculty with the small grants for research. So everything that I've talked about today and all of the research that anybody at Monmouth University does depends on, on students, undergraduate students. So what are they, they collecting the water, they're bringing it in, they're doing the testing? You have to think of it as a hierarchy of, of introducing students into research. They start off uh, doing relatively simple collection of data, field collection of data. Then there's more um, advanced processing of the data, or processing of the samples back in the lab, chemical analyses, um, microscopy, flow cytometry, like um, I have in my lab. And then if they stick with it and they get into it, um, they actually end up doing the writing, which is really valuable and really you know high-end stuff to write up a report and actually write up a, um, a scientific report of what they've been doing. At Monmouth University, they can do that as an honors thesis, or they can do it as a um, just as a, a research assistant writing up a, a paper for publication. But you know that's the ultimate goal and the ultimate feather in the cap of an undergraduate student leaving Monmouth University is, is to have finished a research project and actually contributed to or published a, a research article. Where are most of these published? It depends what field you're in. In my field, there's a journal called Harmful Algae. Sure. It's interesting because, you know, the harmful algae, um, they're, they're phytoplankton, and phytoplankton play an important role, but harmful algae really get people involved mm -hmm. because the things that harmful algae do in the environment affect people. Right. And that's where I find um, you get a lot of traction, both with students yeah, you know, when students come into a marine science program as an undergraduate, they're not thinking phytoplankton or microalgae. They're thinking sharks, whales, turtles, big things. Right. So my challenge as a, as a phytoplankton ecologist has always been, I know they're important. Other people in the field know they're important. How do you get an undergraduate student, 18, 19-year-old student, coming into a marine and environmental biology and policy program to understand and appreciate the importance of a microscopic diatom or mm -hmm. dinoflagellate, a small, you know, something growing in the water column that they can't even see unless you put them at a microscope and, and show them. There was an event in 2015 where a cyanobacterial bloom called, caused about half a million people in the Lake Erie area to lose their drinking water. They couldn't drink the water coming out of their tap because it had toxins from the cyanobacterial bloom in it. So yeah, it's a major problem for drinking water. So the, the Monmouth University Summer Research Program is an um, internship program for undergraduate students to do research full-time with a faculty member for 10 to 12 weeks over the summer. The undergraduate students are paid, uh, they, they make an hourly rate, and they basically join the lab of a faculty member at Monmouth University and take ownership and leadership over a research project that they do for the summer. Uh, in my lab, my students work on harmful algae mostly or other phytoplankton related things, but in the biology department here at Monmouth, there are people working on sharks, there are people working on wildlife animals, uh, terrestrial ecology and plants, and then we have the whole biomedical side of the biology department, people who are working on cancer and tumors and molecular genetics of different systems. 
So how can students who are watching learn more about what you do? So my lab at Monmouth University is called the Monmouth Fab Lab, P-H-A-B. So phytoplankton and harmful algal bloom lab. They can find that on Instagram under Monmouth Fab Lab. And I have a web page and they could also uh, find my email on the Monmouth directory page and contact me by email. Or they can call. Or they can call, of course. The sure. phones still work. Well, thank you for doing all the work that you do to keep our waters clean. Thank, thank you very you. much, Jason. Thank you. And thank you for watching. We'll be back right after this.